Okay, in this video, we are going to once again use the uh, auxiliary equation for solving a uh, second order differential equation. A reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. I think this is our third video right now and dealing with the auxiliary equation. And if you watched the previous two, you know that the idea is, is pretty straightforward. Here we have a second order derivative, so we place that with m raised to the second power minus 5, and here there is no derivative. So you can think of it as a differential operator to the zero power, so here we have m to the zero power. And of course, m to the zero power, that's just 1. So, there's the auxiliary equation, and obviously m will equal plus the square root of 5 and minus the square root of 5. So, a second order differential equation, once again, because we have a quadratic equation here, we're going to have two solutions to it. The first one, e to the square root of 5x, and that could be multiplied by some constant. And the second one, e equals some constant, e to the minus the square root of 5x. And that's the solution. Now, and again, we can plug these in, and we'll see that indeed it comes out to zero. Let's do this. What we said in the previous video is that we can expect to have two different solutions to a second order differential equation. Furthermore, if we add them together, take a linear combination of these, that also is a solution to the differential equation. So you could say that in general, y equals c1 e to the square root of 5 times x plus c2 e to the minus the square root of 5 times x. Now, let's go ahead and take first and second order derivatives of this put it into here and see if indeed it does come out to zero, that in fact this, that the linear combination of these two different solutions is also a solution. So here we'll have for dy dx that will be the square root of 5 c1 to the square root of 5x, and then here we'll have minus the square root of 5, c2, e to the minus the square root of 5, times x. Now for the second order derivative, square root of 5 times x, and then here this will be plus 5 c2 e to the minus square root of 5 times x. And our differential equation that we wanted to solve was this, so we will have this minus 5 times this. So here we have 5c1 e to the square root of 5x. We'll have minus 5 times this one. That's 0. And here we have 5c2 e to the minus square root of 5x. We'll have minus 5 times this one. That comes out to 0. 
So once again we see that when we want to set up the auxiliary equation, it's just simply a matter of replacing our derivatives with m to the appropriate power, a second order derivative which m squared. If there's no derivative, it's just replaced with 1. Obviously, if it's a second order differential equation, we're going to have some kind of quadratic expression for our auxiliary equation, which is this. So we're going to have two different solutions then, because we'll have two different values of m. Remember, this was the entire operation here was predicated upon, for this, the general solution was y equals a e to the mx, as we discussed in the past two videos. We solved the auxiliary equation for m to find out what it has to be. If it's a second order differential equation, we're going to have some kind of quadratic equation for our auxiliary equation. Therefore, we'll have two different values of m. We'll have two different solutions to our second order differential equation. And what's more, any linear combination of these two different solutions is also a solution to our differential equation. Okay, so this has all been very straightforward. So far for our auxiliary equation, we have had examples where the roots of our auxiliary equation are distinct. They're different. What happens if we encounter a situation where the auxiliary equation has repeated roots? How does that affect the solution? And that is what we'll examine in the next video.